Hey folks, today we are looking at Gone Home. Uh, this game is developed by the Fulbright Company, and it's a... More or less, it's a first-person point-and-click adventure. So, we're going to take a look at it here. Um, this game is on Steam currently. It's going to be a very, very quick review, because using a game of footage, um, <laughs> it's such a short game, I don't want to be showing too much of the plot straight off the bat. So, I'm going to take a look in here anyway. Um, for an indie game, it has some very interesting graphics options available, which is quite good to see. A very good adjustable uh, field of view. I'm happy with 70 though. So, here we go. And back again. Okay. So, we're going to start a new game. Okay, and... Now that's one thing I didn't like there, if you look. Uh, new game, and it overwrites your existing save game progress. Now for this game, it's not really a big issue. Because the way the plot develops, you, yeah, you're not going to go back to old saves and what have you. But at the same time, eh, it's not really a feature I like to see in games that much. So, yep, we're going to override all that. And traditional mouse to look around, arrow keys to walk around. I think everybody gets the concept. Now, this is one of the reasons I kind of like this game, is its art style. The game is set in 1995. So, as you can see, we've got a cassette tape as the loading screen. Um, uh, it's a bit nostalgic for me because I used to play on Amstrad and we actually used cassettes to load the games. <laughs> they probably didn't realize this when they were making it, but yeah, it hit a nostalgic note for me. So basically, the premise of the game is you play Caitlin Greenbrier, and you arrive home after a year on Hi, holiday. Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I but get the back house on is empty. 6, but it's a really late you have to find out why. The cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Now, the voice acting okay, in this so game is, in my opinion, it's really, really good. I like it. The main character, um, Caitlin Greenbrier's voice acting, I'm not really a big fan of. But her sister's is outstandingly good. I really, really like it. So, we're going to take a look here now and show you a little bit of the game. Well, <laughs> I could show you about five minutes and it'll be a big chunk of the game, but anyway. <laughs> Theoretically, you could probably speedrun it in, well, I don't know, five minutes. But you would be missing out on a lot of the story. So, as you can see, atmospherically, it's very interesting. Lots of wind, rain, it's dark outside. But, yeah, it sets tone really, really good, I think. So we're going to turn on the lamp, because I'm scared of the dark. And this was uh, an in-joke that I ran into later on. Now, I knew where the key was uh, for the front door. Sorry, I'm going ahead of myself a little bit here. As you can see, the door is locked, so you have to find the key. This was covered. The key is here. I'm not going to muck around pretending I don't know where it is. So, walk up the door. Now, there's no run mechanic for the game. You walk everywhere. It's a little annoying, but Given the shortness of the game, it's probably a mechanic just to make it last that few minutes longer. Okay, so, um, on the door here, we have a note. Now, throughout the game, you go around the house looking for clues as to where your family have gone. And you can see notes on doors and what have you. And to zoom in, you uh, right-click and you can read it here. Can't be there to see you, but it's impossible. Please, please, don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. I don't want anyone, mom and dad, crossed out to know. Well, nobody else will give a shit. And we'll see each other again someday. Don't be worried. I love you, Sam. Nice little letter to come home to on a dark and stormy night after a year away. Okay. So, we go in here. Now, as you can see, the atmosphere is really fucking spooky. <laughs> it's little things like that. I know it's cliché, the flickering lights, the stormy weather and what have you, but this game, the sound, the atmosphere of the house, like, you'll hear noises coming from rooms that you haven't been in. It it, re it really does set the tone, and when you figure out what's going on later on, you realize how well they played that when they developed the game, how well they played on human um, emotion. So, yeah, it's a really good feature there. Now, this is... The, I don't want to ruin this in joke, but um, let's just say I had a habit of um, switching on every single light in the house as I went around, and the developers have something for that 
kind of scared as shit player. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, here we go. And sliding door. So you can search all the cupboards, and you can pick up any item. Uh, well, nearly every item. And pull down the right mouse button, you can rotate the item. There is a lot, a lot of detail here. Packaging information, what have you. It's 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 padding, but it's um, it's fun padding. Now you can put it back where you got it, or you can chuck it all over the place. First time I played the game, I didn't like chucking stuff everywhere. I had to put it back where I found it, which was interesting for me because, it, without realizing it, I carried off the bat not to disturb the house as I was playing. So yeah, it was it was interesting. So got another file here. And there's all these incidental little pieces, like just a moving sheet. As you go around the house, the whole purpose... If you've played L.A. Noir looking for clues... Oh, So much actually. has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not going to let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Just like I was talking to you. So, that's your sister Sam. Now, she's missing as well, uh, you don't know where anybody is in the house. And throughout the game, as you stumble across items, you'll hear these journal entries, um, voiced. <laughs> The voice acting, like I've said, is really, really good, and it does tell the story very, very well and sincerely. But until you get to the end of the game, you're kind of wondering how you're hearing this. Uh, it, it sort of broke the immersion a little bit for me. But I. It's one of those trick problems, I think, because. Yeah, it broke the immersion, but I can't really see how they could have gone about it another way. So it's one of those things I didn't like, but I can understand why they've gone with it. So, here we go. It, and it does have more emotional impact than, uh, like, reading a diary entry. Nearly all of the time. So you pull the string. And here you got, like, a name tag. She's a senior conservationist, forestry service. And you got all these packing boxes. Okay. Check all these as well. Oh, that's something I didn't see the last time. I don't know if many players will uh, know what I'm on about. Um, I remember, like back in the '90s, the first couple of PC games, their idea of photorealism was to put uh, actual photographs uh, and stuff in the game, backgrounds, what have you. So it's, it, I don't know if that's kind of a throwback and the fact that the game's set in 1995 and it's sort of like an in-joke, but um, yeah, it's just something that made me smirk a little bit. <laughs> So there we go, and fuck you, I'm throwing the tissues on the ground. So here we go, check all the cabinets and what have you, and there we go. So basically, the premise of the game is you just go around and you look for clues and what have you. So that door is locked. So I'm just going to look around here, and the house has some uh, hidden rooms and what have you, and there's stories to be found in all parts of it. Got the notebook here. This is like one of the subplots in the game. There is one main plot uh, to do with your sister and why she's not there. And there's a few other subplots that I've come across as well. This is one, her old neighbor Daniel. I uh, lent her the Nintendo with Street Fighter games and what have you. Um, so that's one aspect there. There's a few other subplots as well concerning your parents and... Uh, yeah, there's a, f there's a few that build up over the course of the game, and it really adds to the immersion of it, and I reckon there's one or two that I haven't actually found yet. And there's so many nice touches like mom and dad with the names written underneath and what have you, so it's, you can tell they've put care and thought into the game. And the way that you... the story progresses as you go around the house, because certain areas are locked off at the start, and you have to find the key for them, but as you find the key, you find pieces of the story from the beginning, so it, you do feel the sense of progression rather than just random entries or random speeches from Sam uh, telling from her journal. It's It does link together very, very well. 
I don't know, was it just the way I played it? Or... If it was intentional, it's... But it worked. It worked for me, anyway. And I think that it played really, really well as well. So you got it here. Oh, that's it. Still not. Even incidental stuff like school, um, what you need for school. Oh my god. You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school. And there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. <sighs> Great. Now that there is one of the issues I had with the game. It was setting this tone, okay? Um, you start off like, if you haven't read the reviews, you don't know really what's going on. And you know your family isn't there. And they go on this sort of subplot to make it... <laughs> So it throws the genre. You don't know if you're playing a horror game, if you're playing an adventure game, and while, or well, not even an adventure game, uh, like a point-and-click game. It's <sighs> the horror part for me fell flat. The way they did it, it didn't strike true. It was so cliched that you knew off the bat that that's probably w not why you're in the house. Unless I've really missed a big chunk of the fucking game. Um, yeah, so that was one aspect I, I kind of didn't like. Um, but, yeah, like, with the atmosphere they're set, it's sort of thing. But they could have done it a whole lot better and a lot more spookily. But it felt more like Scooby-Doo to me. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and now, over here, you have a locked cabinet. Now, I'm not going to ruin the surprise for you, but there's a particular code that you have to use on that, that any, um, FP... Now, do you hear that? That's what I was talking about earlier, the atmosphere. You can hear, like, spooky noises in the other part of the house, which is, uh, kind of weird. There was a TV on in one of the rooms that really freaked me out on my first playthrough. So, um, anyway, that code, anybody who's played a certain best game of all time will know the code off the bat. And, uh, <coughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I kind of did like that touch. You mentioned that game, you've got my support. Aw, oh, this motherfucking TV. Now, I honestly don't know if this was a reference to, um, Dawn of the Dead, the remake. Um... There's a scene in Dawn of the Dead where the TV is playing and they're going through the counties where the emergency shelters are and what have you. And I don't know if this was similar, uh, like a, a nod towards that or not. I hope it was because that's a fucking kick ass movie and yeah, it, I kind of like that. <laughs> I was kind of waiting for zombies to come bursting through the fucking windows at this point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's as much of the game I'm going to show you as for now because. It is a very, very short game, and if I show you anything too much, it's going to ruin the surprises for you, okay? All I'll say to you is, if you play it, make sure to look everywhere, because there's paper everywhere, like in a bin here. As you can see there, doors are locked, and I've played it through twice already. And the first time I played it through, I didn't find everything, and it took me about 40 minutes to play through the game. Now this game is priced at, I think, £15 on Steam. Now if I pay £15 for a game, I don't want it to be finished in 40 minutes. Now, I know I played the second time and I found more stuff, more story, more plot. But, still... From what i found so far, I think I've found maybe about 90% of what's available. And I've only played the game for two hours, not including this playthrough. So, <laughs> it's one of those things like, it's a good game. Um, it is a good game, okay? It's, fu it's a fun game to play. The first time you play it, your nerves will be on end. You'll be switching on all the lights and what have you. But, 
shortness for the price that we're paying 15 pounds i just think it's a little steep for what's actually provided it's good what's provided but it's the price is way too high for what's being provided it's like um I try to support the indie scene. I buy a lot of indie games, Prison Architect, Kerbal Space Program. I like alphas, and this feels like an alpha. But it is actually a full release, and it does sort of leave you asking for more. So, I don't know. For me, I can't really give this game a very high score in this review on the grounds of its shortness and its price. While it's a good game... I have to give it maybe, say, a uh, 7 out of 10. Okay? One, they're losing points because the price is too high. Uh, the physics system in the game isn't great. You can drop plates on the ground or throw them and they don't break. And for an indie game, okay, fair enough, but still could be better. The way your character picks up items, there's no hands on display. You just turn things around. A little touches like that that I thought would have been better. And the fact of the price of the game that they're asking for it is ridiculously high for something that lasts 40 minutes. That's this feels more like a um, a tech demo, to be completely honest, of a bigger game. So, yeah, it's going to be a seven out of ten for the game. If you like point and clicks, if you liked LA Noir, you like um, finding the clues, then I highly recommend this game. If you're looking for <laughs> an FPS or something, don't come near this game. If you like your action, don't come near this game. This game is a point-and-click L.A. Noir style game, but that's incredibly, incredibly short. So, I hope people will buy it, but I would suggest that you wait until sale on Steam. Wait till it's about six, seven pounds. Even then, I think it's a little steep. So wait till it's 75% off on Steam before you buy this game. But I would recommend buying it just for the atmosphere. And it is worth playing, but not for the price it's currently set. So there's my opinion on Gone Home. I hope you enjoyed the review, guys, and hope to see you next time on the SNG show. So thank you for watching.